Cool. Do you think we could uh, open up for a few questions? Yeah, just sure, to absolutely. Check in and, and yeah. see, because I feel like so this this part, by the way, was the most complicated complicated yeah. part of like how Bitcoin works. What would cause the discrepancy? Like, why would one computer think a transaction happened and another would not? So there, there could be multiple reasons. Some of the reasons, uh, the nodes might be trying to be malicious, right? Like, I I want. Let's say it's censorship. Let's say that. Uh, some companies or some governments did not want something to happen, so they're saying this didn't happen, right? And you're trying to steal money, hack money, someone like is trying any to steal of that, money. Right? Someone is trying okay. to block something for from happening, or it could be it's, they didn't have malicious intent, but there was a network partitions and they just didn't see the data, right? And they're so they're not trying to be malicious. They actually believe this is the version of the reality. Like imagine. Uh, in our example earlier where Bill Gates was sitting in Seattle, let's say for some reason one trans he didn't hear about a transaction. So he actually believes that, hey, this is the version of reality, but he's just out of sync. I think if, uh, and this might be a little high level, but if, you're, if you are a coder and you've used is GitHub, an anal a good analogy, like yeah. if you use GitHub, sometimes two developers are working on a project and one person can make a change and the other can make a change at the same time. And then there's a conflict and it's like, well, which one are we going to keep? Kind yeah. of, and then you kind of have we to can, resolve we, it, that. Even the same thing happens with Google Docs. Like Google Docs. Shared, yeah. shared Docs, right? Like, let, let's imagine that there was a version of file that you were working on. I got it, yeah. And then I edited it, but Chris also did it. Like, at the like, same hey, time. Like, we need to merge this back yeah. in. Yeah. Right? And, and, but imagine that there's a conflict resolution mechanism where I can say, hey, Chris, I'm going to take your changes. I'm going to put them here. Are you fine with it? He, he goes like, yeah, sure. Let's yeah. just go with this version. Or we'll discard a version. So what's happening is you're discarding a version and saying no, the, this is the view of the world. Yeah. Because the the major that's the majority view, right? But the way that they, de they decide on what's the majority is the complicated part, right? Because the majority is decided in a way that no single party can just like take over and suddenly become the majority. Like I can't just go and buy like 100 computers and come back in and suddenly like, hey, I'm gonna take over Bitcoin. You yeah. can do it, but you'll have to spend at, at this point like maybe two, three hundred million dollars and then manufacture these chips and like basically it's, it's extremely hard to do even for a state level actor. Like even if you're a government, you'll have to spend some, a lot of resources and money and actual hardware before you can attack the network and then still people would notice. And, and is it clear, Chris, that um, like this used to be, or because currently <laughs> is monitored by banks. Like if there's a conflict resolution, you're like, well, the bank will, you go and see your bank statement and it's like, that's the answer, right? And so the change or in this, this new currency that is being developed, this is all public. So does that mean that it's a lot more likely to be uh, ma maliciously, or is that, does that mean more mistakes are more likely because it's public or open source? Or? I, I think it's basically, um, it's more auditable because the mm. information is public, right? And I think there's a difference between privacy and the system being more public and open. Like nobody really knows who you are because you are represented as this random string of numbers uh, that's your address. Right? And you, it's, very, it's not your bank, like your bank account address because you can change it very frequently. It doesn't really matter. So nobody really knows who you are when you make transactions, but the history of transactions is public. So anyone can go back and audit them all the way to the beginning of time. Whoa. And the beginning of time is when Bitcoin started. Right? So in a way, like it, the, so this fascinates me because Bitcoin is not just the currency that the internet never had, it is also the sense of time that computers and the internet never had. Like they don't have a sense of like how time moves forward and how you can roll back time and go back to an earlier state. Oh. So that's... Uh, that's cool. Yeah. Cool. Other questions? So can somebody hack it and steal money from others? Or yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's a... <laughs> no, I'm saying absolutely that's a great question. <laughs> We're going to show you how. Yeah. So uh, what happens 
here is, actually, I'm kind of like thinking maybe I should run through the slides a little bit and then okay. come, come back, back to this. Come back here because there is some information there. Because it's a lot to like digest. Yeah, 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 this yeah. is complicated.